You might recall by this discussion of the self based on the Sri Aurobindo's uh, classification, we discussed something in the 7th and 8th chapter about recall we had discussion on the Panchakoshas as the notion of self. We also discussed that different koshas are classified into shariras or body. So, gross body is uh, is an sthul sharir or gross body is annamay kosh, uh, sukshma sharir or subtle body uh, is pranamay kosh, manomay kosh and vijnanamay kosh and karan sharir the causal body is anandamay kosh that is our real self. In the Vedant they say that all what is real is Brahman which is constant integrated all pervasive name of consciousness that consciousness first reflects in the form of ananda. So, sat chit ananda that is its form that is its expression ananda is the ex first expression from the ananda comes vijnanamaya kosh from the vijnanamaya kosh emerge uh, manomaya kosh then pranamaya kosh and then the gross body appears. So, that is the basis of the Vedanta. In the Sankhya also it is said that Purush, they merge, they come together in the presence of Mahat and the Mahat result into in Ahankar, Buddhi, from there emerge Tanmatra, the, the root senses and from there comes the sense, or, uh, sense organs or faculty of senses, Panchakoshas emerge after that and before that the panch tattvas come. So, in both the streams uh, Sankhya and Vedanta what is assumed is, so in both the streams Sankhya and Vedanta it is upheld that constant integrated awareness in the presence of Prakriti or not in the presence of Prakriti in the Sankhya they say it is with Prakriti, Brahman they say it is because of ignorance, because of Maya. So, these are uh, the differences in the interpretations, but uh, eventually both the systems believe that it is the subtlest and the most pervasive aspect result into more individualized aspect of uh, physicality, mentality or physicalized aspect of individuality. So, if we have to manage ourself, we need to manage at the gross level as well as the subtle levels. So, for that there are many interventions in the uh, we call yoga. Yoga as explained earlier comes from the word yuj that means the joint that which joins that which connects. First it was used for that piece of sent together for the work of agriculture is inherently it means that which connects or actually it should mean that which reconnects our individual self and the cosmic self are always one actually the individualized self is result of the cosmic self it is an expression but because of ignorance or because of prakriti uh, whatever philosophical school we follow we experience the sense of individuality or we experience the separation from others yoga help us in dissolving their that experience and if that experience is dissolved even for few seconds even for some time in being in our physical body then that is the state of blissfulness that is what yogis talk about. To achieve that state there are predominantly four paths there can be numerous paths if you look at the uh, list given by given in the 
Fristine's book on the psychology of yoga, he enumerates more than 40 types of yoga. You also must have heard about many types of yogas, but Swami Vivekananda classified it in a simplistic way branches. Bhakti yoga that is about surrender to the embodied form of universe. So, that constant integrated awareness not many people can relate to that. So, uh, they give some form to it, form of Krishna or form of Shiva or form of Ram. These are the forms given, these are also uh, avatars and these are accepted as the expressions or embodied form of supreme. In fact, in the Indian tradition, there is a notion of Ishtadev, whom you revere, whom you direct your most positive emotions, whom you consider the expression of the ultimate self or the best self or the Purusha or the Brahman, that expression is called Ishwar and Ishwar is conceived as Ishtadev and Ishtadev meaning the dev or superior of your liking. So, we can actually form the ishtadev, we, we not only can choose the multiple forms available in the form of Hanuman or Shiva or Ram or Krishna or uh, uh, form of uh, uh, mother, uh, we can actually develop. Uh, so, so, theoretically, uh, yogic tradition also uh, allows people to develop their own forms of their favorite form of Ishtadev. So, Bhakti Yoga predominantly it is Manomaya Kosh driven, Gyanamaya, then comes the Gyana Yoga. Gyana Yoga is based on the core question of who am I. So, they question am I body, am I mind? Am I Panchatattvas? Am I society? Am I my thoughts? Am I my beliefs, etc.? And, and, and by reflecting on these questions, they aim at reaching to the state of neti neti, the state of recognition that all that is, all that is experienced in general is the result of maya, it is a result of uh, my ignorance. It is called ignorance because we are the one supreme Brahman and because of the ignorance we start recognizing as separate individualized selves. So, Jnana Yoga uses power of intellect, based on that intellect it constantly ask its disciple to ask the question about who am I and that process through which this examination takes place is called Shravan that is listening to these thoughts, Manan means thinking about these and Nididhyasan meaning internalizing these and looking at how these thoughts become part of our actions as well. Fourth is Karma Yoga, when we aim at achieving the ultimate goal of life by action. When the spiritual realization, when the ultimate goal of human life is, is, is considered to be achieved through the path of action, remaining in the world, being engaged in the day to day activities of job, vocation, business, can we attain the spiritual life, can we attain the spiritual experience? the Karma Yoga says it is very much possible. How to do that? That can be done by first identifying what I am good at, what is my true nature, what is that by doing which I forget the sense of time, I just get immersed in that activity. I can carry on with that days after days, weeks after weeks without getting tired and what gives me not pleasure, anand, bliss while being engaged into that. That is the combination of aptitude, my nature, my capabilities, my uh, upbringing, so many things. That is the first form of swadharma, 
that is the first aspect of karma yoga another aspect is offering that whatever you are best at offering that to make the world a better place offering it for the world maintenance that is the karma yoga we are going to discuss the importance of karma yoga in terms of the career management and fourth yoga is called hatha yoga or raj yoga swami vivekananda called it raj yoga uh, some other uh, great masters have called it kriya yoga uh, ashtang yoga is the general name because it has eight aspects and also called hatha yoga that's what we are going to uh, mostly discuss in this course 